at the end of that, that should help our internal rotation and help give you that length or that width in that backswing to give you that maybe a better position, maybe that'll allow you more speed, but I think that's gonna help your golf game a lot. Thanks. Hey guys, my name is Jordan McComb, uh, here with McComb Performance. I'm a strength and conditioning coach here in Surrey, British Columbia. Um, and I'm gonna go over some mobility today, uh, specifically focusing on our hip internal rotation. So this is episode 11 of Golfer's Mobility. If you haven't seen the previous 10 episodes, uh, I'd highly recommend checking those out. Um, for all different parts of the body as a golfer, we're kind of highlighting those areas that are used a lot and pose potential injury risk. So um, I've got a golf club here. I'm just gonna demo a few things on the golf swing. Um, so primarily hip internal rotation focuses in the back swing. So that back leg requires internal rotation to get that pelvis facing backwards. So I look at it from this angle, that right hip for me is almost fully internally rotated. So what I've noticed is uh, I'm working on some things in my my golf game right now, I've taken a lot of swings, um, even last year when I focused on a lot of speed, um, I did notice a little bit of tightness in that right adductor um, high into that groin area. So you've got a few primary muscles that work on that hip internal rotation. So you've got your adductor muscles, uh, primarily probably uh, magnus longus, um, and then you also have some on the outside as well. So your TFL, uh, your tensor fascia lata, um, can also help to externally rotate. Even the glutes as well, some of glute med uh, and glute min will help uh, internally rotate that leg. So if, if you put that knee up and you really internally rotate this way, you can really feel that outer half. When we go into that swing, you may feel it a little more through that inner, through that adductor, but you're also gonna get through that hip. So we're gonna pop down to the mat and we're gonna work on a few things for that adductor. So following that theme that we've done all along, uh, we're gonna start off with a release. So I've got two options here. Most people will have a foam roller, that's an easy option. This ball is really good. Uh, I got it from the Ready State, uh, Kelly Surrett, you may know. Um, it's just a little bit bigger. You can pick up similar ones on Amazon, uh, slightly bigger than a softball. Works to get a little bit better into some positions where we don't as mu have as much leverage. Um, so I'm gonna be lying on my stomach here first. And uh, I'll do it on my left leg. Obviously you're gonna get both sides here, but maybe place a little more emphasis on your trail leg where you're using a lot of that internal rotation. So I'm popped up pretty high into that uh, groin area. And I'm gonna roll around a little bit first. I'm probably only working from about mid quad up towards the pelvis. And I'm gonna start by just rolling forward and back and work my way from mid quad up high into that pelvis. So after we spent a little bit of time doing that, you may have found those tender spots. For me, I've got one a little bit higher up, kind of right into there. Deep breaths is always a focus. And then we can do that contract, relax. So squeeze that leg five to seven seconds and then relax and sink in with those deep breaths. So work around, let's say about a minute to 90 seconds on each side, uh, maybe spend that little bit longer time on that trail leg. So that's step one with the release. Okay guys, so step two, again, if you've been following along the first 10 episodes, you have a good idea, um, it's gonna be the stretch portion. So two ways we can do it. I do have a few boxes here. Um, this is gonna help to get a little bit of a deeper stretch. You don't have to use it, um, you can always use and any object at home you have, maybe a stool, maybe a short chair, something to elevate that leg, but that's not a, uh, not a requirement. We're gonna start, one knee is down, and I'm gonna extend that opposite leg. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna sit that butt back towards the heel, 
And as you can see, I'm in a really lengthened position of that adductor. So that's right up where I'm feeling that tightness for me. Right now, I'm probably from that upper half to about maybe upper third. Um, that's where my tightness is. So I'm gonna try to bring myself into positions that are gonna get a good stretch in that area. So again, deep breaths, big inhale, exhale. What we can also do, this is gonna shift that pressure either forward or back, is the position we put our foot in. So if I point that toe up to the sky, now I get it more back into that hamstring. So I think it's good to get both, but if your tightness is primarily on the back side of that adductor, maybe even partially into that hamstring, that would be a good idea to do. What I'll do here is I'll kind of move through that motion. So I'm gonna to go toe up, gonna to rotate it internal, and then back up to the sky. So that's from the flat ground. If you wanna make it a little bit tougher, pick that leg up and do that same action. Sink deep into that hip. That's a really good stretch. Contract and relax is, is always an option as well. So I'm gonna sit back, I'm gonna squeeze, try to contract that full leg, and then relax. Again, 90 seconds, maybe even as long as two minutes on each side, uh, a great option for your stretch. So we've got our mobility with our ball, we've got our stretch here, um, and we'll move on to our little activation to finish it off. Okay, so to close it out, we are gonna get some activation or we're gonna move through that action that we've been trying to improve upon. So if I've done my release and my stretch, hopefully I've given myself a little more mobility in that area and now we're gonna actively use that to really dial that position in. So one of the things that I love to do, if you follow uh, my other videos, my Instagram, I get into that internally rotated position very frequently. I think that's an underrated position in that hip. So if you think about that golf swing, it is kind of confusing. I know it even took me a while to figure out, um, even with my, my background in anatomy and physiology. Um, but if we rotate that hip that way, you might kind of think it's external rotation, but think about it the opposite way. If I rotate that hip and that knee stays out, now that's external rotation of that rear leg. So the leg isn't moving as much, but the pelvis is moving around it. So as my pelvis goes that way, internal rotation of the right hip, as I go into the downswing, I'm into a little external. And then again, as I come through, I'll finish in that internal. So one of the actions I like to do, this is a good one that you can just hammer out for reps, really focusing on getting into that position. So I'd recommend as many as 50 to 100 reps. Um, you can pump it out nightly, um, something that will give you that repetition and that um, that uh, mind muscle connection, I should say. So I'm gonna load in. As I step back, I'm gonna turn as far as I can through that hip into internal rotation. So up, back into that position, and finish tall. So I'm not just dropping in and then kind of turning the chest. My focus is really coming from that hip. Yes, my chest will turn but really pay attention to your feeling through that hip. I'm feeling it right through that inner leg, maybe a little bit in that outer half. So I'm really controlling from that right hip, getting back into that position, and then finishing up strong. Rotate and back. Go ahead, get your 50 to 100 reps there. And I think at the end of that, that should help our internal rotation and help give you that length or that width in that backswing to give you that maybe a better position, maybe that'll allow you more speed, but I think that's gonna help your golf game a lot. So thanks for watching again. That's episode 11. Tune in next time for the 12th episode of Golfers Mobility. Thanks a lot, guys.